Welcome to Super Cute News. My name is QT. No relation to QAnon, Q-Tips, or Quentin Tarantino. President Donald Trump has missed the opportunity to grant the presidential pardon to Julian Assange in his last day in office, making independent journalism an unprotected target from attack by any government. Julian Assange, founder of WikiLeaks, is fighting extradition from the United Kingdom to the United States, where he is charged with conspiring to hack government computers and violating an espionage law over the release of confidential cables by WikiLeaks in 2010. The charges carry a maximum sentence of 175 years in prison. Assange is an Australian citizen, not based in the US, who published truthful information about its military, but is being sought for extradition and prosecution in this country due to his involvement with the publishing of the Iraq and Afghan war logs the largest leak in U.S. military history. Donald Trump offered to pardon Julian Assange if he provided the source for the hacking of the Democratic National Committee emails before the 2016 U.S. presidential elections and that compromised Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. This, according to Assange's lawyer, Jennifer Robinson, in a statement as a witness in a London court. She claims to have observed a meeting where former Republican U.S. Representative Dana Rohrabacher and Charles Johnson, an associate known to have close ties to the Trump campaign, made the offer in 2017. Robinson said Assange was told Trump approved of the meeting and Rohrabacher would later meet the president to discuss the reaction to the proposed deal. The proposal put forward by Congressman Rohrabacher was that Assange identify the source for the 2016 election publications in return for some form of pardon, Robinson said in a witness statement given to the court. Assange refused the pardon bribe at his own peril, demonstrating what many see as journalistic integrity by protecting his sources of information. Many distinguished intellectuals and world leaders are showing vocal support of a pardon. Carrie Schenkman, a constitutional law expert, said the U.S. has indicted WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange under an extraordinarily broad spying law that has been used in the past for political motivated persecutions. Speaking during Assange's extradition hearing in London, Schenkman called the century-old Espionage Act one of the most contentious laws in the United States. Marie McGuire, Nobel Peace Prize laureate, included this statement in a letter she made in 2019 to the Nobel Committee requesting Assange's consideration for the honor. By Julian's courageous actions and others like him, we could see full well the atrocities of war. The release of the files brought to our doors the atrocities our governments carried out through media. It is my strong belief that this is the true essence of an activist, and it is my great shame I live in an era where people like Julian Assange, Edward Snowden, Chelsea Manning, and anyone willing to open our eyes to the atrocities of war is likely to be haunted like an animal by governments, punished and silenced. Therefore, I believe that the British government should oppose the extradition of Assange as it sets a dangerous precedent for journalists, whistleblowers, and other sources of truth the U.S. may wish to pressure in the future. In 2016, Assange obtained a ruling from the United Nations claiming he was being arbitrarily detained and should be immediately permitted to leave the Ecuadorian embassy and return home to Australia. Despite winning the Walkley Award for Most Outstanding Contribution to Journalism and also for which Assange won the Sydney Peace Prize for the 2010 publications, the Australian government took no action in protecting Julian Assange from the 175 years in prison he faces. 
The U.S. government tried to claim in the extradition proceedings that Assange put lives at risk with these publications. However, during the Chelsea Manning trial in 2013, Robert Carr, a U.S. Brigadier General in counterintelligence, was unable to identify one casualty. Pentagon spokesman Jeff Morrell had said in 2010, there was no evidence that anyone had been killed because of the leaks. In 2010, WikiLeaks had published Collateral Murder, a video showing the U.S. military killing two Reuters employees in Iraq, and the Afghan War Diary, then the most significant archive about the reality of war to have ever been released during an ongoing conflict. Chelsea Manning was in a U.S. military prison about to face espionage charges and a possible death penalty for allegedly releasing material to WikiLeaks. The documents demonstrated that there were many thousand more civilian deaths than reported or acknowledged by the U.S. government, as well as a systemic failure to investigate reports of abuse, torture, rape, and even murder by Iraqi forces and abuse in U.S. detention facilities. Julian Assange's hopes for freedom had been foiled after a judge refused them bail despite a decision to block his extradition to the United States on mental health grounds. Assange will have to remain in custody as the U.S. government is appealing against the extradition ruling. WikiLeaks was removed from Amazon servers in 2012, as well as blacklisted by Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, and their DNS provider. As part of what was reported to be a coordinated international campaign driven by a WikiLeaks task force in the U.S. In short, Assange and WikiLeaks have been deplatformed long before Trump was banned from Twitter and Parler. Both disagreeable to the status quo of corporate-owned media, with the difference that the truthful information published exposing the war crimes committed by the military started a persecution against the journalist. Meanwhile, Trump's unproven claims of election fraud that helped spark the riot at Capitol Hill may go unpunished. The decision to pardon Assange is now in hands of President Joe Biden, which if done may put a defining stamp on its presidency by setting an example for freedom of speech and ensuring the safety of independent journalists around the world. According to the Declaration of Human Rights by the United Nations, Article 19, Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. We'll see what happens next on a future episode of Super Cute News. Yay!